You're listening to Technology Frustrations and Gimmicks with your host, Aaron Moss. Hello, this is the Technology Frustration and Gimmicks show, uh, sponsored by Computer Doctor of Tucson for all your computer needs. This is a uh, special uh, program that I'm just, uh, something had come across uh, my desk uh, just the other day, uh, October 12th, uh, 2019, and it's a scam. It's a new type of scam that's going around, and this, uh, you know, I, I get, I see all kinds of uh, scam things uh, that happen. You know, I, I, it's something that I'm interested in, something that I study. I, I figure out how they work and why they work. But this particular one uh, really, really got my attention. Uh, the reason why it's got my attention is because if this scam were to happen to you, okay, I feel that a lot of people would fall for this scam um, because it is so far away from what your typical scam feels like. It's a scam that uh, that originates on the phone and it is a scam that uh, has to do with your bank. And basically uh, it, it's amazing how easy this uh, scam is. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about the scam. Basically someone uh, can find out what bank that you do business with, okay? Which is not that hard to do, okay? Uh, it could be someone that you've dealt business with, someone that you've wrote, written a check to, okay? Obviously, if you write somebody a check, okay, to pay for services or goods, it's going to have the name of your bank on there, obviously. It's going to have the routing number, the, the, uh, the account number, and all that, right? So, and generally, we've accepted the fact that people have access to this routing number, account number, and uh, something that has your name on it on the same check. And once they know that information, they could implement the, the following scam. They could give you a phone call. And it's pretty much a known thing that uh, caller ID uh, is, you know, can be fudged. It can be people with the right technology or with the right software know how to go into the phone systems and change the caller ID from the phone number that they're actually calling from to whatever number they want. And they can make that caller ID look like it's coming from the 800 number of your bank or the or a real working phone number uh, that the bank that your bank uses and if you have your bank programmed into your phone it'll actually show up as hey this is your bank for example I actually deal with uh, Chase Bank Chase is my bank I've been dealing with them for years and if they were to fudge the Chase phone number my phone would actually say Chase Bank is calling I mean that's what it would say so what they do is they they uh, they change that caller ID. They call you immediately. You may think that it is your bank calling, but you don't know that for sure. So you pick up the phone, and what they're going to do is they're going to ask you, or actually they're going to tell you, um, yes, this is whatever bank uh, am I speaking to, Aaron Moss, okay, or whatever your name is. Now they're already going to know your name because they they would have done a little bit of research before calling you. They already know that you're uh, a Chase customer or, or whatever bank that you are. And then they're going to ask you, uh, you know, are you speaking to the right person? And then you're going to say, yes, this is Aaron Moss. It says, uh, this is, uh, you know, Chase Bank. We're calling to inform you that there's been a little bit of fraud, what we've, what something that we have believe has been flagged for fraudulent activity. And what they'll say is, did you withdraw you know, $100 from an ATM in some foreign country or foreign city outside of where you normally live. And obviously what they want to do is they want you to say, no, no, that wasn't me. It says, okay, um, for the security of your account, what they're going to do, for the security of your account, uh, we have to uh, send you a, uh, a, uh, uh, a confirmation code to your cell phone. Uh, are you willing to... Uh, 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 accept the uh, the charges for that text message and of course you say yes yes yeah well, yeah text message no problem and then they send you the code and then you read the code back to them you think everything is legit right so far and then they continue on the phone call and then they're telling you 
Uh, okay, well, did you make... Let's make sure that some of the other um, transactions that you are doing are legitimate. Then they start reading off your actual transactions that you've actually done in the past few days. And then you say, yep, those are legitimate. Yes, I made those purchases. Yes, yes, yes. And then you think everything's all, all in the up and up. Obviously, if it was your bank, they would have that information, wouldn't they? Well, did you know that you could actually be speaking to a scammer? Okay, and that code that they sent you on your, on your uh, cell phone is actually the same kind of code that the bank would send you if you are trying to reset the password on your bank account, on your bank's website. So let's say that you, uh, so if you go onto your uh, bank's website, okay, and you say to your bank that you forgot your username and you forgot your password, they will actually, uh, there's actually little things that they can do to figure out what your email is, okay, that's not too hard. But then to figure out your password or to reset the password, your bank's website will often ask you to um, to verify a, a unique code that they're sending to your text message to your cell phone. And that is the code that they're actually se sending you on this uh, scam phone call. And when you read that code back to them, what you're actually enabling the scammer to do is to reset your bank password. And they're doing it on the phone with you right at that very moment, and you're helping them. Now, uh, which brings us to the second part of the scam, where they actually succeed in uh, changing your password, and then they log into your account, and then they read off transactions that they're seeing on their screen back to you. And you're confirming and denying, or, you know, you're confirming, you know, the transactions that you've actually done. After they get off the phone with you, you think that you have just protected your account when in actuality uh, a major breach just happened. Now someone else is logged in as you on your bank account and uh, now they can do any number of things. They can write themselves a check and uh, have it mailed to them. They can, uh, uh, they can uh, have a new debit card issued. If they know that you're going out of town, they can uh, have another card issued to them and then they can go into your mailbox and maybe take it. Okay, any number of things can happen once they have access to that. So that's definitely a bad thing. Now here's the way you can protect yourself. You can always be the originator of the bank. Okay, if you get a phone call from your bank, make up some sort of excuse. I can't talk right now, can I call you back in five minutes? Okay, and then when you call them back, you call the real bank. Call the actual number that appears in the back of your debit card or the phone number that appears on your, um, on your uh, bank statements every month. Call the real bank, okay? And then speak to a representative and tell them that uh, you're responding to a fraud alert. And if they say nothing about a fraud alert or there's nothing in, this, in, the, in the notations about a fraud alert on your account, then you know that that initial call was a scam. Okay, this is extremely powerful because the people on the phone already have a bit of information and it's called doxing. And uh, it's something that you really, really need to be careful of because doxing is, the, is just like putting together a puzzle. They get little tidbits of information and they use little pieces of information to get larger pieces of information. And uh, if they know enough information about you, Okay, or, uh, you know, and there's so many different ways to do it, and it's almost impossible to protect yourself, but there are some things that you can do to protect yourself, and that is knowledge of these scams. So that's why um, the Technology Frustrations and Gimmick Show is uh, on your side uh, to uh, inform you of these types of scams. We're probably even going to make our next... Uh, our next uh, a future season. We're probably going to do an entire season about how these uh, technology scams work and how you can protect yourself. But uh, thank you very much for all of your attention. But I, I just had to make this, uh, this, uh, uh, this episode about this uh, new scam. But please be safe out there. Be careful what information you give to people that are calling you on the phone. Okay, until next time, this is Aaron Moss signing off. This episode of Technology Frustrations and Gimmicks is sponsored by... 
Computer Doctor of Tucson, because technology is great when it works. For more of our podcasts, visit techshow.xyz or wherever you listen to your podcasts.